Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct another lab session and today we will try to implement an application and today's application is very interesting because it is related to radar system engineering. So radar system, uh, we will be implementing this radar system with the help of our microcontroller, pick 18 f 452 So let's read this statement what we are going to do. Radar system uses a listening listener, uh, sensor and then listens for a high value from the sensor. So basically, uh, it's a sensor which senses for certain power uh, values, right? Uh, this is the normal principle of radar, it senses. And then whenever it detects something, it sends some pulses towards that direction. And whenever that direction is, uh, uh, if, that, if there is any target present in that direction, th that pulse will strike to that, uh, that specific target and it will come back to the radar and radar will sense it back. And if, if it is senses, back to this thing so basically that means radar has detected some target so we are not going to implement full radar but we will be actually implementing the very first part that means if it receives a value from a sensor which is of course a listening sensor which will be sensing the minimum power and then it will send a pulse towards that direction uh, and that pulse duration is given about 300 milliseconds so let me read it again once it detects a high value from sensor, that means it has detected certain value from the sensor. So it will generate a pulse with duration of 300 millisecond. This is the primary, uh, this is the primary radar part and uh, we won't be doing the next thing, but this small application we will try to implement using this radar, uh, using this pic 18 f 452 microcontroller. And uh, one, one thing more, we have to use crystal oscillator of 24 megahertz. So, Let's say this sensor is attached to RB0 pin. So this is this is going to be our input pin. And whenever this sensor sends a high pulse, we will send a 300 millisecond duration uh, pulse at RC0. So we will generate a pulse whose uh, duration would be around 300 millisecond. So RC0 will be our output pin and RB0 will be our input pin. Uh, first of all, uh, we know that we are going to use timer in this lab. So three, these 300 milliseconds, we will be generating using timer, right? So first of all, we need to calculation. Uh, we need to perform certain calculation. Okay, I have performed all the calculation for you. So crystal oscillator is 24 megahertz. That means frequency of instruction would be one fourth of it. So 24 megahertz divided by four would become 64 megahertz. So six mega, sorry, six megahertz. So six megahertz is our instruction frequency. Then we will be evaluating the time of one instruction. So time of instruction is uh, basically one over frequency of instruction. So one over six megahertz is equal to 166.67 nanosecond. This is the time of one instruction or time of one uh, count, right? So we will have to evaluate the timer count for the given delay that we have to evaluate 300 millisecond, right? So 300 millisecond uh, divided by 166.67 as the formula is required delay divided by time of one instruction. So 300 millisecond divided by 166 point nanosecond and it will produce 1.79 million. This is the count. And you know that this is not the valid count for timer zero because the maximum count could be or can be uh, around 65,535. So this is not a valid count. That means we cannot produce uh, this amount of count. Uh, so what we have to do, we will use the prescaler. As for prescaler, the formula will become required delay divided by time of instruction into prescaler. So 300 millisecond divided by 166.67 nanosecond. And let's say we used 32 as a prescale. So we will be using 32 factor as a prescale. And once we perform this evaluation, it becomes 56249. And it is a valid uh, count because it is less than the maximum count, which is 65,535. So th this means we have to use 32 uh, scalar or 32 value for the prescaler, and then we can produce this amount of delay. So the initial values of the timer, we can calculate using the formula maximum count minus the timer count we evaluated plus one due to the rollover point. So 65,535 minus 56,249, which is this count, 
plus one uh, and this value will become nine two four seven and if we uh, convert it into hexadecimal it becomes equals to two four four seven hex that means this is the uh, value in hexadecimal so now here i want to mention one thing if you have missed my theory lectures again, again uh, about this particular topic so this rollover point is very important so i will suggest to watch those tutori uh, tutorial first then you will understand how these formulas are being generated so we have to use this formula 2447 two, value in timer 0 l and timer 0 h val value so timer 0 h is 24 hacks and timer 0 l is 47 hacks and remember we have to use a prescaler in timer 0 control as well so timer 0 control is equal to binary 0 is timer 0 on and off bit so it is 0 16 bit so it is 0 internal clock so it is 0 and x uh, source edge we are considering positive edge so it is it will be 0 and we are not disabling prescaler rather we have to use it so it becomes 0 uh, to enable it and remember for prescaler we have eight different options available 2 4 8 16 32 64 uh 128 256 so we will be using 32 and 32 uh, combination is 100 so this is due to this 32 right so this 32 is actually producing this value so this value would become 0 4 hex if you convert it into hexadecimal so these are the values of different timer registers that we have to use now let's write the program for this application Okay, I have written the code for you. So first of all, the first line is press CF, C comma RC zero. That means we are declaring this pin as output pin. Then we load the values of timer zero control. Uh, it is zero four hertz in timer zero control, 24 in timer zero H and 40. Okay, there is a mistake. Let me correct it. This is 47 hertz. So, so be also loading the value of 47 hacks into timer 0 l so these three registers are loaded then we clear the timer 0 if flag uh, just to be cautious so that when we start the timer it should be zero right and then we check uh, then we check the sensor whether we are receiving a value uh, of one from the sensor uh, at rb0 or not if sensor sends rb0 if sensor send one value to rb0 that means we will come out of the gist check we will verify whether value is received and then we will proceed otherwise we will stay on this line so bit test file is skip if sad port b comma rb0 and we branch to sensor check we keep on this uh, specific line we stay on this line unless it becomes equal to one so when uh, sensor one sends one value to rb0 then rb0 will be high and we will this condition would be true and we will skip this instruction which is sensor check or branch to sensor check and we will come to uh, the next instruction which is bsf port c comma rc0 that means we will produce a high value at rc0 and then we start our timer bsf timer 0 control comma timer 0 on that means we will be turning on our timer so once timer is started we will check whether a rollover has occurred or not so this area is for rollover check right that is why i have just named this particular label rollover check so we are continuously monitoring timer zero if flag if timer zero if flag would be one then we will come out of this loop otherwise we will stay and this will happen only when rollover occurs or timer expires so one timer expires that means 300 millisecond duration is already produced and this rc0 pin is highest since 300 millisecond then first of all we will clear the timer zero on bit or turn off the timer and then we make it again zero rc0 pin right so that means rc0 will be again zero so this pulse will be produced which is around 300 millisecond and then we will repeat this procedure for indefinite inter time for indefinite time interval that means we will have to branch it again to repeat and then we will repeat it to this position why because timer has expired and this values we actually uh, feed it in the timer that is 2447 hertz has has been reset to 00 that means we need to reload these values again so we will switch to this area where we actually uh, reload these values 
and again we repeat the same procedure so this is how this program works i hope you have understood this uh, complete explanation of this code let's go and write this particular code in amplilab environment okay i have written the all the codes which we have which we have already explained earlier in the ambilab environment uh, the difference is again these two lines which i have already told you that these lines are written for the purpose of hardware and software implementation so we have to include these lines these are like must must instructions which we have to we had which we have to be included in every code of pigadina 452 then we proceed to our Uh, the remaining code is almost similar so this is the same code what i have to do i have to actually uh, run this code so let's build this code and this is succeeded that means the code is ready and now we will switch to our uh, switch to a proteus environment where we will implement this code in hardware okay i have built it this complete setup for you uh, in proteus environment Uh, one thing which is noticeable here that I have used uh, push button again for sensor purpose. Here you can see uh, this is our sensor simulation and the, uh, a push button to simulate the effect of sensor. And this is connected to this RB zero pin. This is our RB zero pin, which is the our input pin. This is the RC zero pin. I hope you remember. Uh, one one can observe here as well. This is RC zero, and this is connected to oscilloscope. And I'm using channel B of oscilloscope. right so we will be observing this effect on oscilloscope first of all we have to actually load the values inside this proteus so how you will load it you have to right click on it and then click on added properties and here we will be defining the hex file and remember this is very again very important step because you have to uh, so far we have been using 4 megahertz only which is a default crystal oscillator but right now in this application we will switch it to 24 megahertz remember it was given in the in the question so 24 megahertz we will using in, we will provide this path right 24 radar hex is basically this uh, hex file and i will burn it into the uh, microcontroller by pressing okay now it is uploaded now what can I, what can i do i have to run this code right so to run this code i have to turn on this button play button and when i'm going to do it uh this oscilloscope is open now okay now this uh, oscilloscope is running and you have to be very careful here look this button auto is basically pressed i'm just pressing it again or i'm just releasing it so that you can see so this auto should be on and once i'm going to press this a uh, push button it will simulate the effect of the sensor so as i am going to press it it will produce a pulse on oscilloscope as it is indicated by the uh, uh, problem statement but once you will press it it will uh, appear and it will go because this is continuous capture of uh, this pin so what i have to do i have to first turn it on auto and then uh, for a few seconds i will just click on it and it will uh, i will release it again and then a pulse will appear and i will uh, very quickly i will just disable this auto button so that i can ac actually capture the few seconds or few duration for which it was turned on right so let me do it again and why i am using push button why not i am using a simple switch because if i will press here uh, if i will use here a switch what is going to happen uh, this Uh, will be turning this will be turned on for very long duration because we cannot uh, actually capture it for uh, for very long time so switch will be on for very long time or signal will be sensor will be sending high value for very long time and 300 millisecond pulse will be producing again and again and we won't be able to visualize this effect so that is why i am using a push button whenever sensor sends a high value to rb0 we will just press it and release it so it will happen in few microseconds and it will be uh, simulating the effect of sensor so that is why we are using push button so i am going to use this i am going to press this button and release it and for and quickly i will just disable this auto so that i can capture the few seconds of rc0 pin right uh okay so i'm going to turn it and so if you 
scroll out this window this is a captured area of oscilloscope right so you can see that it was zero earlier and it becomes high for certain duration and again zero for complete duration so this is the pulse and now we have to verify whether it is 300 millisecond wrong or not so you have to be very careful here uh, in understanding of it you need to see the time per division which is right now uh, i have set equal to so this is basically time per division i hope you can see it 50 millisecond so 50 millisecond that means one horizontal division is around 50 milliseconds so let's count these values these are basically how much uh, i can switch its position if you remember look i can switch so i will just set this pulse accordingly using this position button and now you need to count the divisions so these are basically how much one two three four five and six so six division six horizontal division that means six multiplied by 50 millisecond so it is equal to 300 millisecond. So this pulse is around 300 millisecond, which is we were expecting. Okay. Uh, so let me put it again on auto. Now this pulse is gone. Why? Because this is continuous observation of this zero. And now I cannot come to the point where this pulse was happening. If I want to capture it again, I have to press it again and release it and uh, stop this button. So now you can see this pulse is again captured for short duration. I hope you have understand the concept of uh, this application. Here we use timers, right? Uh, uh, and very important uh, calculation for timer is values of registers, different registers like timer 0L, timer 0H, timer 0 control. And if you closely observing this video tutorial, I hope you can now generate different timer delays and if you have any still confusion you can post your uh, confusions and comments in comment section thank you so much for listening